Welcome to Machine Shop Tech Talk. Today I'm here with my buddy Brandon Ferris. He is Business Development Manager for Loudoun County and we're going to dig into ways that you can look to get involved in manufacturing and advocate for the trades. Brandon, welcome. Thank you so much for being here, dude. Hey man, I really appreciate it. And yeah, so in my role as business development manager for Pause for Longest Title Ever, Specialized Manufacturing, Logistics and Aviation. It's really, really all about building our manufacturing ecosystem here in Loudoun County. And kind of along the way, I've picked up some tips and tricks and ways that, you know, you can kind of deeper your involvement and your engagement with those things as, as you move along, figuring out your manufacturing journey. Yeah. And I love it. I know we originally met at IMTS, which if, if y'all listening, haven't been to IMTS, go to IMTS. You can make great connections like this, but we, we got talking the other day about ways, ways that you're getting involved in like, dude, if you'd be up to record, let's share some of these ways because the ways you're using for Loudoun County, other people out there listening could take into their own neighborhoods, into their own communities communities and maybe find ways to bring more attention to the trades and help build them up. Let's go over a little bit about just how you got into the role that you're at right now, maybe like a like a 10,000 foot level view, kind of your progression to get where you're at. And then let's dig into some of those tips. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, career wise, I started off in the United States Air Force, I was enlisted. And uh, my career path took me into government contract where we buy and sell goods and services on behalf of the United States government in order to keep military bases operating. My active duty tours came to an end in 2015 and I stayed in the government contracting space as a contractor for a few years, really making sure that people had all of the supplies, services, whatever they needed to keep kind of rocking and rolling, keep going, keep the base going. I moved into the commercial space in 2017 as a program manager and business development manager for a woman-owned small business in Prince George's County, Maryland, where they had a variety of contracts in logistics, aviation, mm -hmm. computer maintenance, communication systems, classified administrative work, uh, a little bit of everything. So I kind of yeah. cut my teeth in the commercial space doing that. And then around pandemic time, you know, things slowed down for the business, things slowed down for me. I didn't have to commute as much. And so I yeah. really wanted to, to have a role that was closer to home. So my home county, Loudoun County, Virginia, which is home to Dulles International Airport, was looking for a business development manager in specialized manufacturing, logistics, and aviation. So I don't have a traditional manufacturing background, but I've always, you know, been able to talk to people, get them what they need, figure out their requirements and show them the best way to get it done. So taking all of those, uh, my role here now is to kind of diversify our economic base, particularly in manufacturing, aviation, and logistics and attract those companies in while also supporting the companies that we already have here to ensure that they have everything that they need to continue to grow and, and be successful. And so, as you mentioned, Art, it kind of led me to this path of figuring out how to make sure that manufacturing was a part of the conversation. So I started like at, at the ground level. I really got an idea of what manufacturing companies are located here. And if, you, if you're if you familiar with the U.S. and the way that our, our country is kind of geographically separated from its industries, when you think manufacturing, you don't think Northern Virginia or the D.C. metro area. You don't no. immediately think <laughs> manufacturing or any of those things. So my idea was like, okay, let's figure out what manufacturing really is in this area. And this is, is something that anybody can do. Take a look at the industries that are around you. Uh, for us, yeah. we had an infrastructure that was heavily built on technology, on um, data centers, on software, on some small scale manufacturing around circuit boards and, and data driven processes. So mm -hmm. I wanted to understand better what uh, what those requirements were, what those companies were doing and where they were. So I talked to a couple of folks here to figure out. I took some tours, walked around. People are, you'd be surprised how many people will let you in their doors if you let them know <laughs> you're interested in what they're doing and that yeah. you, you really want to strengthen their base. So it, it's first just having the conversations and asking the questions like, hey, I, I want to get more involved in manufacturing. What, what do you do and help me better understand a way that I can help you? So that, that's always the first step for me, asking that question. 
Yeah, and it, it's a great place to start because anyone can ask that question, right? As long as you're willing to have a conversation with another human being, you can discover what's there. And and funny enough, after we had our, our first conversation where we scheduled this recording, I went out to a local group up here in Canada called EMC, they're the Excellence in Manufacturing Consortium. They're Canada wide. I went to them and I was like, look, I don't know how I can get more involved, but I know you guys are super involved in supporting manufacturing in Canada. So what can I do? And I actually just went to an event this week. They were like, well, the next event we have is this. They're like, come out to this event, talk to the local manufacturers that are going to be at this event. And boom, I showed up and, you know, we were at a place called SFU, uh, which is uh, Simon Fraser University. I hope I got that right. But and then the, that university talked about everything that university is doing to support local manufacturers. And they had people from the city there and the city was explaining their funding. Like, and it's all because I took your advice, man. And I went out and I had a conversation and they're like, hey, you want to serve manufacturing? Here you go. Here's an opportunity. And I got to connect with all of these different humans that are all working in my local area. Anyone listening, like this is, it sounds super simple, like it's too easy, but this is literally the path that's going to get you there. It really is. And, and you mentioned something really important, uh, Art, just having the conversation and talking in person. Like, it's great to connect virtually. There's nothing wrong with it. That's kind of the way of the world. You know, yep. we've moved to this this society where, you know, remote working is awesome. But nothing will ever replace an in-person connection. And that's kind of where you and I connected at INTS. Had never yep. met before. We rolled in some concentric circles. But the moment we talked, we connected. Boom. Because I saw your yep. passion for manufacturing. You saw mine's. And we're kindred. Yep. So nothing replaces a conversation. Also, another way that I kind of went about it was building our relationships with community partners. And so okay. the, the largest community partner that you can have in any area is the public school system. I have children in our public school system here. I have four kids, so that's why I don't have any hair. Um, so I was really <laughs> uh, a little publicly. I wanted to make sure that my children had opportunities and they were gaining skills that they could use to be successful in their future. So I joined the Loudoun County Public Schools Career and Technical Education Advisory Committee. They were just looking mm. for parents to get involved. And so, you know, we go, we have meetings once a month throughout the school year to really sit down and talk about the technical education requirements from the state, how we're using those program dollars and driving forward technical education. Now, to just demystify that a little bit, technical education is everything from computer science to health and medical care to skill trades to um, beauty and cosmetology um cybersecurity, all of those things that you could be successful with a certification and not necessarily a four-year college degree yeah. are kind of those career trades where you're more working with your hands and you're applying principles directly to something kind of physical yeah. is the technical education portion. So I really wanted to get involved with that. And kind of through there, uh, I was able to develop a deeper partnership with the public school mm. system. Now having chaired that committee for a couple of years. I'm the past chair now. Now we're in a phase of our relationship that when I bring employers to the county to visit and they want to know about our workforce, I can contact the folks at the public school and say, hey, I have this employer in this trade. You know, they're wondering how you guys can support that in the future. Oh, bring them out, let them tour the school, let them talk to some of our students so they can see that when they get here, they can have this workforce they can integrate into them as they kind of grow up and move forward. I love so all of that, right? Like I've already like given you your flowers over all of that before because it's you're you're taking the actions that are necessary, but the key thing there I don't want people to miss is you're working within the community to bring the community together. You're having the conversations with the schools, but also with the local employers and the local trades and the different skills that are available, like that are in demand locally to help make that connection, to be that facilitator or however people want to look at it, to make it possible. It's something that anyone can take into their own communities. You know, any parents listening right now, I'm not saying every parent listening right now needs to go sign up, but don't assume that there are other parents out there that are doing this that are more skilled than you. Right. If you've got the bug and you want to contribute, go to your school, find out. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to be a politician. This is not saying that you no. have to join the school board or any. No, no. This is saying that 
to de again demystify a little bit. You don't necessarily yeah. have to be a parent. You can be a community member. Um, there if you, you go. If you have a toddler, if you don't have any children at all, but you're a member of that community, they want to hear from you because as as awesome as you know, schools, state funded schools and things like that are, they don't know everything about the real world. They don't yeah. know about the current skill sets that are being employed, you know, for for human beings that are actually in the workforce right now. Their their yeah. goal is to train the future. So you can help guide and shape that future by simply, again, having a conversation, um, taking your interest to them and saying, hey, I work in this space and I'm interested in you know, seeing how we can expose children to this, because what we've learned, and this is this is science, that the more that our children are exposed to things, the more interested in things that they are, they they will find they'll find something that's for them. But you have to present them with the entire cornucopia of options. There is I did a, a interview the other day with Jason Roth from Autodesk, and he suggested something in there that he did. Um, I think it was Ivy League Technical College that he was involved with at one point. Mm -hmm. But he's like, we did a reverse career fair because then so what that meant was the company showed up and had boot, uh, the children showed, showed up, the students showed up, they had their own booths displaying what they want, were up to. And then each company went around and, and the relation here is, is that it was exposing these children to brand new career paths that they wouldn't have th thought about, right? In a standard career fair at like the middle school, high school, whatever level they're doing it locally, the kids are going to go where they're, you know, maybe their dad worked there, maybe their mom worked there, maybe their uncle, someone in their family. So if they have no one in their families right now that have participated in trades, the, these kids aren't going to think to pursue the trades but the the reality is is the trades are literally whether again whether it's even cosmetology or beauticians or welding or machining or whatever it's the art of creation you are you are a creator right we have all these young children out there that want to be youtube creators because they see it as a way to express themselves or tiktok stars because it, it's an act of creation but what if they took that love of creation and the love of making things into the trades, into manufacturing, into another vertical like that, that they could find that rewarding creating aspect that they're seeking, that that release, that ah, oh, like th just the experience of creating, right? Because you get you get something from that. You make something, you make a reel on TikTok or on Instagram or something, you start to get likes, you get that reaction. Oh, I made something. Other people like that something. Well, man, I was a machinist for 12 years. I made stuff that people use every day. I I got to see those people use those things. I got that same kind of reaction, except I was making something in the physical world. And that's what you're doing for Loudoun County is you're you're creating more opportunities there. And there's all of the benefit of the economical development that it's doing as you attract these companies in, because now they're bringing other ways that the local community can create. And then we've got trade and we've got all these things that happen in the physical world that bring benefit to the, the local economies and the life satisfaction, right? That's why I love that you advocate for the trades because it's it's satisfaction in life. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny that you, you kind of hit it on the head and it kind of brought me to my third point that you also have to talk to the people that are that are going to be involved in the trades in the future. So yeah. earlier this week, we have a, a a specialty school called the Academies of Loudoun. And it's kind of oh. our repository for our skilled trades, our, our computer sciences, and kind of all of these schools. The kids are actually taken from their neighborhood high schools and they spend half of their week at, a, at the academies and half of their week in their home school. So they kind of get the best of both worlds and they get That's real cool. hands-on applicable training, right? It's super cool. I wish they had this yeah. when I was in school. So yeah. I actually, so there's a program uh, called MATA um, and I totally forgot what the acronym stands for, but it's actually a trades academy within the school. And so yeah. they teach building and construction maintenance. They teach welding they teach masonry, they teach HVAC, and they also teach uh, automotive and other um, repair trades like that. So I sat down with five kids um, in the kind of construction, masonry, HVAC, welding, and the answers and the interviews will come out on my on my LinkedIn over the next couple of weeks where oh, doing some editing. I'm gonna right watch now. for that. Tag me oh, in that sure. stuff, man. Tag me. Oh in my that. gosh. Oh my gosh. And the answers that they got, everything that you just said was exactly what they said. I had one person. And they said that, hmm. you know, I think that a building, a skyscraper is beautiful. I said, what, what do you, and this is, a, again, this is a teenager. So 
Yeah. These are big, you know, they said yeah. that created building is beautiful. Like it shouldn't even be possible. A 50 story skyscraper that's made of metal and glass um, in the yeah. middle of a downtown. She's like, I think it's beautiful. I think it's, I think it's amazing. And like, I like making things with my hands. And so I want to see something I had in, had a hand in creating. And, and every single one of them also said that, like, listen, I, you know, I may want to go to college. I may not, but like sitting in a classroom is not for me. And this yeah. was just, they just said, listen, I'm not, I'm, they, they're telling you what they need. I'm not an ideal book learner or studier, but if you put me on a job site, you give me a task, something I can do with my hands and tell me how to do it. I'll figure it out. And that was so eye opening. I was able to expose them to some different manufacturing technologies, because if we, if we think about manufacturing at any phase of it, be it, you know, working a CNC or doing CAD or, you know, doing machining as your background is in, or even yeah. things as robotics, it starts with the desire to learn and do something that you haven't done before, or to take your foundational skill sets and apply it to something, you know, something you've done or something that you haven't done. And so yeah. just that attitude that they have right now with the willingness to do something that they haven't done before or to work with their hands or to express their creativity through metal and wood and, and building like that. That was amazing to me. So I can't wait for you to see those conversations. Yeah, man. And I'm not joking. Like tag me in that stuff. I love doing that. I'm working on my own up here to try to talk to more youth for the same reason. But it's like, and the, the one thing that's clear there is the, these kids, the future of our countries, right, are going to get a massive sense of contribution and a massive sense of, well, really, the, the contributing to society, right? They want to see themselves, like when you're talking about the one student, it's like, you know, the skyscrapers are beautiful. Like, I want to have a hand. I want to I want to take part into making these giant buildings that really don't, I don't see how they really work, but I want to be part of the the one of the hands that help create that so I can see my building out there and you can do that in all of the different trades. Right. And that's, that's a very beautiful place. As we start to, to wrap up this conversation, we've covered a lot of different things. The one thing I'm left with, and I'd like to hear yours after I summarize, but it's get into conversation, work within your local communities, make connections online, but then also show up at those local events and be in person to have those conversations. So you might meet someone amazing like Brandon, like I happen to meet down at IMTS and you, you're like, man, like we're kindred spirits. Like we are both playing and hard at this sport called advancing manufacturing. But that that's what I got from this. What, what are you taking away from this conversation, man? Yeah. You know, to me, and this is something that, you know, we kind of talked about before, everything is a relationship, right? So yeah. everything, you know, it has a foundation. You can see it as a traditional relationship where you're, you're courting, you're dating, you're getting married, <laughs> you're building a life together. So like, yeah. you know, it, it, it takes time. It's a process and all those things. But I would say, don't be afraid to jump headfirst into this manufacturing relationship because you, you never know where it can take you. I never thought that, you know, being a business development manager in a county in Northern Virginia would create friends for me in, in Canada or to yeah. create, you know, this this ripple effect of increasing awareness of skilled trades and creating possible job opportunities for for children like i never thought it would yeah. it would be that so to me it's like have the conversation start the relationship court it marry it date it do all of the above but <laughs> fall in love with manufacturing the way that i did it it's a crazy path this world of manufacturing it's it's led me places i couldn't have dreamt of and i'm sure it's going to lead me and you both places that we can't yet imagine but I know if we both keep showing up like we are, it's going to take Absolutely. us some very, very cool places. You just, you just got to be there. Just be there. Just, yeah. just, just, yeah. just be there. You will be surprised. That's 90% of it. 90% of yeah. it is just being there, finding the space that you, that you'll find the most success in, but just, just keep showing up. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Brandon, for, for all you do for Loudoun County, but for even being here now to share what's possible with others. You know, I know, I know down in the U S it might be business development managers for the state or for the County, uh, up in Canada, I've met a lot of uh, ec dev people, economical development people. They seem to play a similar kind of role in the local communities. And those roles need people too that are going to advocate for the trades if we're going to transform our countries. Thank you, everyone out there. You've given us the gift of your time to step in to listen to all of this. And to all my machining friends out there, keep your spindles turning and earning.